Hello. I've never done this before. <laughs> um, I kind of doubt that anybody's going to show up, but I really wanted to make a video for like a very long time, um, but I just don't really have the capacity to edit, especially, but also just in general. Um, in fact, I like even kind of did edit a video and I scheduled it, but then I was just like, I don't even, it's just not worth it. You know? <laughs> it's just a waste of four minutes. Um, it was like the 20th century tag, but I kind of did it differently, but then I just, just wasn't as enthusiastic as I thought I should be. Um, I really hope people can hear me. It doesn't kind of, oh, I think it, I think it's okay. Um, yeah, um, I also, I probably should have just told people that I was gonna do this, but I, it was very spur of the moment. Um, I'm just kind of untying my yarn uh, because I'm making, I'm kind of double, like I'm doubling up the yarn because I want it to be a bit thicker um, for my current crocheting project. Um, so yeah. Um, but I also thought that I would use this um, time to kind of talk to you about, and then at least I'll have some kind of record as well, I guess, um, of, uh, as I'll talk to you about, <laughs> also considering I'm edited, everybody will realise how much more chaotic I am than when I am even editing my chaos. Um, yeah, well, so, um, <laughs> I thought I would use this opportunity to also talk about my, um, sort of my recent reading, um, what I am going to read next, and also kind of a haul within that, um, and then, um, yeah, what I've recently, and what I'm currently reading, that's the third one. Um, and if you're here, like, let me know if you can hear me, hopefully you can, um, but, like, I'm going to leave this up, unless I don't know how to do it, um, so that people can kind of watch it. Um, as as if it's like a regular video, even if it's streaming right now. Um, so please do comment like if you watch this later, because I would love to hear about you. Because um, yeah, one another thing that I've been bad at is like, like you know, well everything, but also um, oh, so annoying. Um, but also like sort of commenting on other people's videos and like staying up to up to date with them. Um, so yeah, let me know how you're doing, is, is the end of that. <laughs> I do know what I'm doing, kind of, with crocheting. I know it doesn't really look like it right now, but... Um, anyway, so I thought I would just start with like what I'm currently reading, because that's kind of an easy place to start. Um, so, one book that I'm currently reading, um, and I'm kind of struggling to read, I guess, but it's sort of vaguely for a dissertation that I might write, but kind of... I don't know, we'll see. Um, and that's The Convert by Elizabeth Robbins, um, which was, it's an Edwardian, and it's a, um, it's like a, a novel, but like it was actually originally a play, um, published in like, uh, when, like 19, I think the play was released in 1907, and the, um, the novel came out in 1908, um, and it's like um, about, politics but especially about suffrage um and like sort of women fighting for the right to vote um and that's kind of I didn't think I would be writing about that specifically but I sort of thought I would be writing about like the representation of women and labour within suffragette novels uh, but I'm not really sure if I want to do that um anymore <laughs> um slash if it's sort of like yeah, anyway, I'll maybe talk about that in a bit when I talk a bit more about the other books I've read already. Um, haha, success. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, and then another book that I'm currently reading, I am actually also reading quite a lot because I currently have like a Scribd membership, which I am enjoying. Um, but another physical book that I'm reading is for this module that I have, which is an eco-literature module. Um, which I, yeah, I'm really, really enjoying it. Um, and the book that I'm currently reading for that, as I've said that for like the 80th time, um, is called Swims. It's by Elizabeth Jane Burnett. And it's this. And it's a collection of poetry that's basically like a poem, every wild swim that the author has done, um, reflecting on that experience. Um, I've read like one or two so far, I think. And they're really enjoyable. Um, I'm not sure if I like the overall collection, but the um 
but as somebody who loves swimming and especially like kind of wild swimming especially more recently um it's been enjoyable to read that so that's cool um yeah i'm also listening to um a fantasy audiobook which is the sequel to uh Ambelo. it's in the Ambelo dossier series by L lara elena donnelly i think is her name um and yeah i'm listening to that on script i don't really like how it's read but it's it's enjoyable it's kind of like about well i actually also feel like the novels um i felt like the first one focused on the wrong people um or at least one of the wrong people um and it definitely could be like more gayer in a woman way um but but the sequel i feel like we're missing the best part of the story in a way like I feel like it's starting in the wrong place and like actually because it, it just like is missing out the part where one of the characters is like part of this resistance to a um fascist state which like could be useful to find out about <laughs> it's like a fantasy in the sense that it's like a different world it's not really a fantasy in a kind of magic sense um which I don't quite understand myself but that's how people have categorized it to me <laughs> um yeah so some things that I read recently, um, so for my dissertation I've read, um, or like for me trying to find a dissertation subject, I've read three things, two, two things. Um, one of them is No Surrender by Constance Maud Montgomery, um, which is a sort of explicitly propagandary um, suffrage novel and um, Constance Maud Elizabeth, she was in the um, like writers for women's suffrage league. I, I think it's something like that. I can't remember the exact name. Um, and yeah, it's a it's an all right book. Um, I think it is interesting in the way that it represents um, working class women participating in the fight for suffrage, and it focuses a lot more on that than most sort of media that I've seen and things um, and the way that people like remember and talk about. The suffrage movement uh but something i really really disliked and that th like the preface and some of the criticism i read like didn't talk about at all was just like the way that this is like a really imperial book and the whole way that like suffrage is considered is this very like sort of nationalist british colonial Im Im imperial view and i didn't like that and that's also maybe that's also partially why i feel like i actually don't want to write about this in the end and i don't want to and if, because if I did write about it, I don't think I could just like not, the, I don't think I could just focus on motherhood in it. I feel like that would actually just be weird and irresponsible, especially considering there is this weird gap and like the preface does literally doesn't mention it, even though it's like blatant within the pages. Like it's really, it's really racist in some places. And like, obviously it's from 1911, but then at the same time, like this is about the fight for women's rights and women didn't have the rights. So of course there would be like, politically radical movements that also oppose like the things happening that this book says is okay um because the past is much more complicated and i think much less conservative as, as at the same time as being fairly conservative than people represented to be anyway so yeah there's that um and then another one i've read is night and day by virginia wolf um <laughs> My copy, it says, I don't know if you can see, but it says the 200th anniversary edition, which is hilarious because it's only 100 years old. It's 101 years old now or something, because uh, it was published in 1919. And I, it was kind of like, I thought there's not gonna be much more about suffragettes and women's suffrage than it was, but it's certainly the early part of the um, 20th century. And it follows two women, um, Mary Datchett and um, Catherine Hilbury, and it's kind of just about how they um, are rewriting and like living in different ways um, as women, and how, how and like whether and with whom marriage and um, life is gonna. Wow, well, that is not a sentence. Shall we try again? Um, it's about the ways in which maybe in a different time, no, nope, gonna start again again. <laughs> um, it, it explores the way that marriage and womanhood are maybe not as, as closely linked as they previously had been and it's a kind of a new age and like things are, things are changing and one of the major things that is changing is, is the role of and the place of women um, in society and in relationships with men.
or not. Um, yeah, I mean, I actually do think that you could definitely very easily read the book as very queer, but um, <laughs> yeah, it's 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 not. I mean, one thing that I did enjoy about it is that you can definitely see when you go on to read other uh, Wolf, um, you can kind of see the seeds of those other books within it, but it is very like formally normal. It's not in any sense a kind of modernist novel in in how we would normally conceptualize modernism um you know it's not like experimental or fragmentary writing or anything like that a uh, stream of consciousness it's not that um and yeah but it is um there are sort of moments when wolf will describe something or people as like lighthouses and she returns to the same visual imagery and like vocabulary around metaphors and things and relationships um in a way that, yeah, you can definitely track on to her later work. Um, kind of in a way of how I feel about, like, Ian Forster's work, too, in how, like, he uses similar language and similar visual imagery, especially in his books, and, you know, especially, like, one specific word which he uses as, like, a verb and stuff, but is muddle. Things are a muddle. That's in, like, four out of his seven books, and I haven't read all of them, so it's, I think it's probably in more of them. Um, but yeah, should I like tweet this out? How would I do that? Oh, look, share. Do I want to tweet this out? <laughs> um, I guess so. I'm just talking. <laughs> just get people get to watch me uh, talk myself into having the courage. Oh, that's not the right website. Okay, I have tweeted it out. Um, let's see if anybody else comes, who knows? Um, but yeah, so whatever I was talking about, night and day, yeah. And then, um, no, I haven't read any of those, yeah. <laughs> um, two books that I got recently that I am gonna probably read fairly soon. Um, that it is also kind of loosely for kind of dissertation, women, class, Edwardian literature um, topics. Well, maybe not even Edwardian, but like kind of 1900 to 1920s, thereabouts. Um, is, uh, the first one is The Cool by Edith Ayrton Zangwill, which is another like Persephone classic um, edition. And I do really like the end pages. Um, and yeah. There's that one. And then there is um, E.M. Delafield, The War Workers, um, which I think is quite a lot about her relationship with her mother. I think it's a kind of like auto fiction, um, although it wouldn't be categorized as that then, but like maybe what we would now consider it, um, and about her work and community within the war too. Um, and like, yeah, but you can see that this is the same edition as this, like the same publisher. Um, which is cool. Uh, I think they actually only publish these two books, but they're like dedicated to kind of like 20th century, um, unf uh, forgotten, unforgotten, you know, like underhyped. What the fuck is that word? You know, underrated, forgotten. <laughs> anyway, um, so those are coming next. I'm most looking forward to reading The War Workers. I think, I think that will be more what I'm looking for. Um, yeah, and then another book that I read recently that I wanted to kind of talk about, I think, <laughs> is um, is um, Under the Pendulum Sun by Jeanette Ng, um, which has this like gorgeous, gorgeous cover. Um, these are like my thoughts on it, um, slash things I didn't want to forget about it. Actually, they're more, anyway, kind of spoilers if I say that, so. Um, and it's a novel of, about the Fae, but it's also like a historical fiction novel. Um, and it's set in the Victorian era. 
um, and everything is the same way except from um, fairyland exists and um, fairyland exists and um, so people send are sending people to kind of colonize it and missionaries out there and it's about the sister of a missionary who um, it goes to fairyland and um, disappears goes to fairyland or just like doesn't respond to her messages for a long time and so she goes to find him because she's concerned about him um yeah it's just really cool um i didn't give it five stars um i didn't feel like i could because uh, there's like one aspect of the story that actually just made me really uncomfortable um and mari like by tweet does that mean she's gonna be here how do i know if mari's here oh no <laughs> Um, I do not know what I'm doing. We've been talking for 15 minutes. Um, anyway, and yeah, so that, this one particular aspect of the story meant that I feel like I can't. Oh, hello! <laughs> this is really weird, like I've never done anything like this before. Obviously I've Skyped people before, but this is very different. Anyway, hi Emma, I'm so glad you're here to watch me untangle yarn and ramble. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, and I thought it was like a really interesting book, but just, yeah, I just can't get past this like one particular element of it, which like is kind of a spoiler. I do think people kind of need to know it before they go in. <laughs> um, I'm talking about the book, um, Under the Pendulum Sun by Jeanette Ng. Um, I don't know if you've heard of it. Um, but yeah, so cool these are all the bits that I would edit out this is um also I, I do actually need to concentrate even though I'm just I'm doing yarn um yeah two other books that I've read recently that I really liked were both for my eco literature module um and one of them was called um that winter the wolf came and it's actually just like available um online for free it's like published by commune editions um although they do like ask you to donate if you can but actually i did try and donate but i couldn't really figure out how um maybe that's because i'm a fool but anyway um maybe when this is published i can put like a link in the description to where um it is but yeah it's by juliana spa and like it's this poetry collection about kind of like capitalism um our relationships with each other and um and I guess like oil specifically but also thinking about like the environment and I think uh, I think like Juliana Spa was in some of the Occupy stuff that happened um but yeah and some of the poems like didn't really work for me but then some of them I really really liked um there's this one specifically about like non-revolution um and like falling in love with non-revolution and how like non-revolution contains revolution and like <sighs> it's this relationship and you kind of do break up, but you kind of don't break, break, break up. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely think, Emma, you would like it. There's also some poems about like, um, well, or like some of the poems include her kind of talking about bringing her son into these political spaces and um, what that is like and like holding his hand and like, there's this one image, I think from one of the beginning poems where people are like passing bricks because they're like building something and then somebody like throws a brick through a window or something and she's like holding her son's hand and she's like okay we actually really have to get out of here <laughs> um but yeah I think it's nice because it's like it it makes you rethink or think more deeply about how you think about like safety and you know seeing like political engagement and movements as part of like keeping your children safe even if like having your safe having your child there is maybe also like not that safe but also, I, I I would question whether it or not it is safe, unsafe to have your child there. I think, like, as long as you're taking some precautions and you have an escape plan, it's, it's probably okay. Unless, like, it's really, really illegal what you're doing. <laughs> um, and obviously, it depends on your child, too. Um, but yeah, and then the other collection of poetry for that module that was good um, is called Corpse Whale um, by an Inupiat. Um, author called Dejean Okpik, I think. Um, 
and yeah it's a really cool collection I found it quite like challenging in terms of I guess understanding what was happening um but I still really enjoyed it and I definitely think it's like worth reading um and just like thinking about and I think there's some really nice images especially I think a poem called like days of next yesterday um these like images of like indigenous resistance and just like continuing living um which is really lovely there's like some two main main strains of my reading now which is just kind of weird but like, like these kind of like ecological like modern generally um poems that are often about all written by like women or people of color and so are like reckoning with like capitalism imperialism and the way that like climate change is this colonial legacy and capitalism is terrible blah 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 um and then there's also just like some edwardian women taken to the streets because they want to vote <laughs> um there's obviously an over simplification and i'm also trying to find like different narratives of edwardian women but um yeah <laughs> that's what's happening i really don't feel like i've done very much crocheting um yeah is there anything else i want to say i did make some notes i'm gonna have a look at them doesn't sound like i uh it doesn't sound like I made notes when I speak, but I, I do try and think about it. Oh yeah, I forgot two books. One book that I'm currently reading is called Attainment. Neither of these have like modern, kind of like new editions, which is really frustrating because like it's quite hard to read things just on, um, or I find it quite hard to just read things on computers. But um, yeah, so one of them is called Attainment by Edith Ellis. And it was published in 1909. Um, and um, Edith Ellis is the wife of Havelock Ellis, who's this like famous, um, famous sexologist whose work I've like written about a lot for previous essays and also in my like undergraduate dissertation. Um, and, you know, that was all right, I guess. <laughs> um, everybody really likes him, I guess, because of the way he conceptualized queer people but from a kind of modern perspective but also even from then like people did disagree but not because they were homophobes but literally because they were like this is really stupid um at the time and also really honest ethical i haven't finished this sentence sorry but like he like used his his wife as like a case study and stuff which like i don't know should you really be doing that um but anyway I do want to read her work, obviously. So yeah, there's, a, I think she wrote another one too. And I think they're both like, maybe thinly slash overtly queer, sapphic, gay, whatever. Um, but like, she, um, <laughs> why is this yarn so? Anyway, um, she, yeah, so she wrote this. And yeah, I think I, I, I might, I'd like, if, I'd like it to be about, but I have no idea if it is, about like different ways of living that women are doing. <laughs> um, so we'll see if that kind of fits in. And then, yeah. And then the other book I haven't started yet, but it's called The Image Breakers by Gertrude Dix, um, which is supposed to be, I think, about like maybe communes and women in the early 20th century. Um, and like, I found out about it when I was read reading this um, article about political formations between kind of 1880 and 1920. Um, so it talked a lot about like socialism and Fabianism and stuff. And I didn't talk about eugenics, but it should have done because that's basically what a lot of those Fabian socialists believed in. Um, but it also talked about like anarchism and also like the labor, kind of like the independent labor party movement stuff too. And it mentioned uh, various novels that were like impacted by politics and vice versa. And like um, The Image Breakers was one of them and so was Attainment. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to check that one out. I told my dissertation supervisor about it and she was like, oh my gosh, like I'm gonna read that now, which was really cute. Um, yeah, I feel like that's maybe everything. And I talked about quite a few books. And I hardly got any crocheting done, and I've managed to procrastinate doing any more reading, so <laughs> who's the winner, really? Uh, it's definitely not you, because now you have a 25-minute video of me rambling um, for your crimes. Um, <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for being here. 
the three, four people who saw this, um, including Emma. Also, yeah. Um, I um, have, I mean, I would like to make a video, but I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. But I guess if I get better at speaking just like in words, <laughs> in sentences, um, then I could like start streaming a bit more regularly and kind of like just do like wrap ups and things like that. Because I could, I could see myself doing that and like being able to do that. I just feel like I, I, I'm so boring and I'm such a fool. But then I'm also like, believe in yourself, love yourself. Even if you are a fool. Um, yeah, but I probably won't be able to make anything in the next few weeks because I'm going to be quite busy for various reasons. Um, this is a, I'm just going to cut something. Where's my fingers? Um, this is what, what I'm crocheting looks like, by the way. <laughs> Thanks, Emma. The idea is to, um, I don't remember if I said this, I feel like maybe I did, but anyway, I, um, I'm gonna, like, donate it to, um, or, like, give it to this, like, community centre nearby. Uh, that's what I like, it's definitely not nearby, but, um, <laughs> in Edinburgh, and, like, um, it's, like, doubled the, um, I'm like doubling the yarn up because I want it to be thicker um, because it's so cold in this community centre um, that uh, you've, you've got to have a doubled up um, blanket. <laughs> and on that note, um, I'm going to leave and um, cool. <laughs> I have been crocheting like so much like I'm literally using this blanket that I crocheted um to keep me warm right now and I feel pretty snug snug oh I do feel snug but I feel pretty smug about it that's what I was trying to say okay um I've rambled long enough um bye <laughs> and I hope you're having a nice evening and nice life everybody except from fascists nazis whatever men <laughs> Bye. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure.